What's up everyone? Welcome to today's video. My name is Mike Will, I am .visuals. I'm stoked to be back in London and today's video is all about the Sony 16-35 f4 power zoom lens. Let's get straight into it. So I just spent the last two months in LA and traveling around America. So if you haven't checked those videos out, we've got a ton of POVs and some really cool content on that. But back to today, so I'm in London. The first thing I wanted to do was test out, we've got this thing in the way, was test out the Sony 16-35 F4. This is gonna be a hands-on review. Um, I'm just gonna let you guys know what I think of it and how, watch out for the poll, and how I, um, yeah, how I enjoy using it, what I do like about it, what I don't like about it. Um, and compare it also to the 16-35 to 2.8. Okay, so as this is an f4 lens, I wanted to test it out during the day. I'm trying to get some shadow play right now with the last of the light we've got coming through. And I'll get hit by a car, or a bike, or a person. We're just gonna find a frame here. Yeah, that's quite nice. I just want a singular person or a bike maybe coming through. So we're gonna start at 16, wait for a bus to come through here. Hopefully these people will hurry up so we can get some long shadows. I'm gonna walk through them if they don't. There's a bus coming now. Okay, nice. Yeah, that's cool. So first things first, the size and the weight, this thing is super small, super compact. I know it's an F4, but for the size that it takes up and the amount that it weighs, it's actually nuts. So. Off the bat, that's the first thing I noticed, and you guys know that I like compact gear, small gear, so having this is pretty awesome. Uh, there's the zoom lens, I'm already having to try and get used to, it's quite weird. It's, uh, it's obviously you have the lens ring on the front, but it's just, yeah, it's a little bit different. So already, I, don't even, I feel like I don't know what I'm doing. So again, having that is just something new. Uh, and also, not having the, what it is if I'm at 35 or at 16 on the front here, is often how I would know, obviously, where I'm at on my camera. So that goes on inside the screen here, and it tells you exactly what you are shooting at. While the sun is just setting, we've got it peaking up here. Let's see how the sun flares. So we're just gonna whack it up to F22. You're gonna to see tons of dust on my sensor right now. But if we shoot it at F22, that's quite nice. We've got F22 with a ton of dust on it. That is at 16, let me double check that. And this is at 35 at F22. So 35. That's how the sun flare looks um, on that. It's quite nice as the sun is dipping. I'm gonna put that back to F4. I don't normally shoot at F22, but it's quite nice if you do wanna get a sun flare. But now the light's getting a bit softer. We've lost those long shadows, so we're gonna keep moving uh, to the next spot. Yeah, all right, yeah, good. Good to see you, how's it going? So we're actually just shooting a YouTube video. What's up, YouTube? What are your boys' names? Uh, Dan, uh, D2 Frames. Kevin, Clue Captain. Shots by Nikki, Nikki. So I look both ways, kids. This guy's coming quick. Yeah, so that was cool. Nice to meet those guys. Big up, fellas. Going. So now we're gonna go to this spot here. 16 I know looks really nice. Um, we've got some light hitting the London Eye still. So we wanna try and get to that as quickly as possible. And then we're gonna head back probably to shoot down there. I don't know, we're gonna kind of see what happens. Okay, so we're gonna punch into 35. Just capture the light hitting the top of the London Eye. There's actually a cool kind of cloud just over the top of it. Are these clouds going? Which way are they going? Yeah, that's cool. Okay, sweet. So now we're gonna go wide. There used to be a barrier here. So pre-COVID there was like a barrier. So if we get one guy here, this will be look really good. So this guy's just playing by himself. Sick, that's actually really good. Tapping on him. 16, yeah, that's cool as hell. We just got one man and his saxophone. Okay, light's still looking nice. Yeah, let's test out. No, what should we do, sorry. Let's think. So we only have about 45 minutes before sunset, which means it's kind of like a power YouTube video as well. So we're actually gonna go asking people to move very nicely. And then yeah, and then shoot basically this hat. Now, being an F4, the depth of field, obviously, is not going to be the same as a 2.8 or even a 1.4. Now, I've often shot that here. So we're just going to do a little bit of tap focus, and we're going to see how it kind of works using the spiral. Again, one of the classic shots of London. Big up Josh Perrett for shooting that in 2016. So we're going to shoot it at about 35. 
So I'm going to tap focus on the bar. It looks quite nice, the golden light's kicking through. So I'm at F4 for that. So I'm just using tap focus. I'm going to tap on the spiral here. We're at F4. And I'm just going to find the frame I like. And then I'm going to tap on the bottom and tap through. Find that, hopefully they line up. Yeah, nice. Cool, okay. So you can see obviously, it's a slightly different to a 2.8 because normally there'd be a lot more um, yeah, depth, but that's how it looks on the screen. So we're gonna stop along the way and shoot, but it's a crazy hectic weekend right now. And I've been away for two months and not realized that summer is now here in London. So therefore everyone is out here. A couple more things about the lens and what I've just picked up on obviously using uh, the aperture ring itself. Now I actually have it locked as an iris ring iris lock ring lock is that what we're calling it it's on here um and i keep it an a because i prefer to have the control up here because i'm used to it obviously for video it's also got the click wheel so you can have it on or off um i'm gonna have that on in case i do suddenly unclick it and then get it away so then i know and i can feel it where i am but for me personally i like to have it locked so that's a nice little feature the lock button because for instance my 35 1.4 does not have a lock and often I find myself suddenly shooting at 1.4 and then it's suddenly it's at two something and I've done it without knowing. And obviously the autofocus and the manual focus switch are uh, pretty standard now with all of the Sony lenses. I think that's it. Power zoom. Bus, bus, bus. Okay, we'll wait for the set, whatever one. Maybe there'll be a gap. Also using the leading lines here. So using the leading lines of the blue line here, the barrier on that side, and then the bike lane there, it's quite nice. But yeah, it's hard. Sometimes I feel like I've, I've just touched the, the trigger here and it, suddenly it's not at 16 anymore, but I have no idea that it's not at 16. So like for instance, there I set up, I thought I had it at 16 and it was actually at 18. So then I had to then change it last second, but little takeaway there after about 30 minutes with the camera, with the lens, sorry. Being a power zoom lens, this is definitely something new for me. I've not actually used a power zoom before, so it was quite interesting, especially when I first started. I'm starting to get used to it now. And this is geared towards video predominantly, I guess, but also because of the size. And it's so great for travel because it's so light, because it's so compact. And if I don't mind having a tripod with me, and if I'm just doing long exposures, F4 doesn't really matter because then I'm still shooting long exposures and at night. Uh, however, if I did want to shoot f2.8, I do run and gun a lot more, especially in London, the city. So having a 2.8 is really important for me. Um, obviously, you're not going to get quite the same amount of depth. But as I said, if you're a tripod photographer and you'd love to have a tripod with you and you're using it f4 anyways or above, then it's unbelievable. And the 16 to 35 2.8 doesn't make a difference to you. So we just ran down, but our mics went on. So I quickly got a shot of a guy in a boat. It was pretty cool. Uh, we're down here by Westminster, one of the classic spots. And as we said earlier, Big Ben is now um, yeah, exposed. So we're zooming into a 25. No, you're good, you're good, you're good. Thanks, bro. 35, I think we're a bit overexposed. There's a boat there, it looks quite nice. There's a bike in front, go on the bike. Okay, cool, there's a boat coming through, which is nice, it fills the bottom of the frame. Sweet, those are on the screen. Okay, so we just kind of half got a runner. We'll put her on the screen now, but I'm hoping that another runner comes through any moment and we can get this maybe with a bus coming over. It's quite a nice frame and there's still quite a lot of light here. Yeah, go on then. Okay, right, here we go, ready? Three, two, one, jump. Yeah, amazing. Cool. Okay, we got that. Bosch, no runner, but a jumper. Cool, so we're back here. Now we're gonna use the couple of things. There's reflections, there's leading lines. So we're looking for all of that and being in a 16, we can get some cool leading lines. Okay, so tapping on Big Ben, grid lines are on. That's kind of cool. It's like some nice depth. I'm at F4, obviously. I would probably normally shoot this at 2.8, but it still works quite nicely at four. Just gonna lean in here at 35, at super grotty water, so we don't wanna, we don't want it to get wet. But the lower here, the cleaner the reflection because it gets lower to the water. So we've just finished shooting up here in London on the Sony 16 to 35 F4 power zoom. Uh, the biggest comparison, the weight and the size. You can see this is the 16 to 35 F4 
2.8. Now I know it's a 2.8 lens, but the comparison is dramatic. Now I do wish I had the Zeiss F4 because that would be a direct comparison, um, but I don't, so we're gonna compare it to the 2.8 uh, because that's what I use. So a couple of things I really like about this lens. The weight and the size are the obvious. I didn't actually have a 16 to 35 when I was in the US for the last two weeks. So having this would have been a great option to have in my camera bag because it's so small and compact and I would have definitely had room for it. As a photographer, something that I'm not sure about is the power zoom. Now, this was the first time I used a power zoom, so it was something that I was getting used to and I'm still getting used to it. But as Andy was saying, it's gonna make a really good option for video. So that is a really good feature if you're just using it for video only. For photo, not too sure, but Again, it was the first time I'd used this and I'm still getting used to it. So what are the prices? So currently in the UK at the time of filming, this is 1300 and this is 2000. Um, so you're gonna save a lot of money with this lens. And if you do shoot during the day a lot and you don't need f2.8, then that's great. If you shoot long exposures at night, but you don't do handheld and use a tripod, again, you're gonna be shooting at f4, that's fine. You don't need to worry about having a 2.8 lens. Um, so that's some really good options there. But obviously with the 2.8, you are getting a much shallower depth of field and for handheld and night photography that I really like in low light without a tripod, having that 2.8 is absolutely key. Would I buy it? That's the big question. Um, I think because I already have a 2.8, I won't be buying this immediately. Um, however, if I didn't have a 16 to 35 and I was looking to get one, then I would highly recommend this as a great option. The other thing is I can't compare it to the F4 Zeiss because I don't have it, but I'm gonna say this is gonna be better than the Zeiss F4 just because of the size and weight difference alone. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, a little overview of what I thought about and how my first impressions were of the Sony 16 to 35 F4 lens, the power zoom. Big up for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video very soon. Oh, 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 oh,